talk to D. David Childress, you know, the author of so many books, you know, a person who constantly appears on Amy Daly's TV show and so many conferences around the world. And today, we're going to talk about Colombia, and specifically a strange site called San Agustin. Welcome, David. Thank you for being Originally, where did the pan come from? Where did it originally India or No, I think they came they came from India, I think from Southern India. South India. South India, yes. Okay. And uh, what language do you think they spoke? Well they they may well have spoken a Tamil language. Tamil language. I, perhaps, yeah. I, I I don't know what language they would have spoken, but okay. uh, sure. They well have been that. Okay. Uh, so they start from South India and they go Southeast Asia. So the they, Cam, they reach North America and then what happens? So the Cam are reaching North America and, and I believe other uh, people are coming from thousands of years and, and the Cam are very old too, just as Hindu civilization is in India, many thousands of years old. Okay. Also I believe they have Vimanas. Okay. They have power tools. You think they, they use the Vimanas to move or you think they use ships? Both, both. both. They use both. Just okay. like today. Okay. Today we have airplanes. Okay. We still have ships. Okay. We are still transporting cargo okay. around the world in ships. Okay. Even though we have Right, that's well. Yeah, that's sure. Yeah. Even we have rockets, we're going to the moon. Yeah, but we, still yeah, have we have all too. time. Oh, well, that yeah. makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there they have fleets of ships. Uh -huh. the, you know, the, today we have so many airplanes and giant cargo airplanes and all that, and all the military planes and jet fighters. Uh -huh. I mean, I think they had Vimanas, they had airships and things. Okay. Uh, but not the number of them today. Okay. Uh, the, I mean, it was very different. It was a different time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they were building craft and uh, they made them, I'm sure, very well. They, they were probably very technical, maybe like a UFO. Uh -huh. Some Vimanas had wings, some uh, were disc shaped shaft craft, okay. others were uh, scar shaped craft and stuff like that. They would use them certainly too for uh, exploratory flights. Okay. Uh, even once they had established certain bases in Easter Island, in Tonga, to any of these places, and in Mexico, okay. uh, Guatemala, yeah, okay. and Colombia. Okay. They're going to have, yeah, they're going to come in Vermonters, but they're also sending ships. Sending ships. Yeah, so it's, they're doing it both ways. Route. So they are in North America, Mexico, and did they? remain as camps or are they changing their identity? Yeah, now they're changing their identity and they're becoming a group that began, at, we know, archaeologists say, at least from 1000 BC, what we call the Olmec people. Olmec people. Yeah, they are pre-Mayan, uh -huh. they are pre-Aztec, pre-Mixtec, pre-Zapotec. Uh -huh. These are the earliest people, really, in, of a civilization in Mesoamerica. Okay. And uh, the, the Olmec situation, the Olmec civilization is a very strange one. Giant statues. Giant statues. Yeah, right. the colossal Olmec heads. Right. They, right. they weigh 20 tons. Right. Perfectly cut out of basalt. Yeah. Uh, basalt is so, so extremely hard. You you need diamond tools, power tools with diamonds to cut that stone. Okay. And at Bison in Vietnam, you also have this basalt. Also. Okay. So hard to cut. But more difficult than granite. So we have the, the, the Olmecs, and the Olmecs are, uh, when you see them, many of them look like uh, uh, blacks from Africa, but, but we have those also in Southeast Asia. Okay. Okay, you go to New Guinea, you go to Solomon Islands, go to Vanuatu, you have exactly the same black okay. people there on those islands. Okay. How did they get there? Okay. Well, the, the camp, we're bringing them. Okay. And the camp were many races. Okay. 
They were Orientals and, okay. and looking very Chinese. Okay. They were people who looked like they were from South India or, or okay. North India as well. Okay. And then some also were looking very Egyptian. Okay. Had thick uh, mustaches and beards. Mm -hmm. And others were looking like they were blacks from Africa. Okay. So they have all of these different races. Yeah, you make an interesting point. You say Native Americans don't have facial hair. That's right. Yeah, it's well known that, that the Native Americans don't have facial hair in, in, in America, in Canada, also in, in, in Mexico and in South America. Uh, they do, they cannot grow a mustache and a beard and they do not have to shave. Okay. They don't need a razor to shave, they, they, they can't grow a beard. Okay. But you see, at Tiwanaku and in the Olmec sites, mm -hmm. you see people with yeah, well, thick mustaches and beards. Yeah. Yeah. And the famous Contiki statue mm -hmm. that uh, that Thor Heyerdahl mm -hmm. talked about, that's in Tiwanaku, in Bolivia. He famously has a big beard and a big mustache. He's, okay. and he's looking like that. Okay. Uh, so these were the Olmec people. Okay. And they then spread throughout Mexico mm -hmm. on both coasts, on the Pacific coast mm -hmm. and the Atlantic coast. Mm -hmm. And all the way down into Guatemala and Nicaragua. So and going down Central America. All through Central America and, and all the way to Costa Rica and even to Panama. They have found Olmec statues, ceramics. Okay. The, the Olmecs left us all kinds of things. Giant, megalithic, the colossal head. That's why you turn it made yeah. out of basalt. But also smaller statues as well and lots of ceramics. All right, we have a wide variety of things, and they are very strange. There are people from all over the world. They're megalithic and, and very odd you know, sort of visages, strange headdresses, things like that. And they're coming. They look like they're from India. Okay. And so, but these guys are Shivites too. Others look very Egyptian, even to the point where they have false beards okay. and things. Okay. And so, you see here, like, wow, here are all these different people. And that's my, that's what I claim in my book. I also wrote another book called The yes, History of the Old, Old Max, okay. which is only about the Old Max. Okay. But I'm also talking about them coming uh, from there. There's, a, there's also a mixture of Shan Chinese in there and the early writing. Mm -hmm. They have now uh, archaeologists, even at the Smithsonian Institution in America, okay. they have traced the very earliest Old Max writing, which is where the where the Mayan writing came from too. Okay. Okay. Everything that's Mayan, including the number system, the calendar, uh, and, and the whole hieroglyphic writing, it's all originating with the Olmecs. They know that. But the Olmecs, in the end, they they built also the pyramids of Teotihuacan. The they base built, of the pyramid of Teotihuacan is Olmec. It's Olmec, yeah. And uh, and the Mayans. Well, well, the Mayans were not. Uh, no yeah. one, no one says that the Mayans built Teotihuacan. Okay. Though no. okay. it's a mystery. Right now, archaeologists don't they, know. they don't know. They they say we don't know who built okay. Teotihuacan, but they, they don't say it's the Mayan. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's the Mayan territory is farther south and more in the jungle. Uh, the, you have another city farther north called Tula, Tula. which was a Taltec city. Mm -hmm. Taltec. Yeah, and, and, and that's. A, those, those the Taltecs too have very thick mustaches and beards and things. So that's my whole idea there that the, the Cam are, are leaving are Southeast from Asia. South India, going South to India, South India, India, yeah. Eventually reaching Central America, Mexico, becoming the old man. And they become the old man. And then what happens to them? They continue uh, traveling and, and perhaps at the same time they're also going to Colombia. Colombia. Yeah, South and America. Ecuador and to Peru. So they're, they're hitting the, the, the calm are coming across the Pacific, uh -huh. they're hitting uh, the Pacific coast uh -huh. of the North America, uh -huh. and but now they're coming to the Pacific coast of South America too. Okay. And they're looking for gold. Okay. They're looking for gold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just like in India and, okay. uh, and the Cam and the, the Vietnamese in Vietnam and, and in Java and everything, mm -hmm. it's gold. Okay. And, and other metals too, but okay. gold especially. Okay. And they have already high technology, I believe they have electricity, okay. they've got power tools, they're able to, to use diamond cutting tools to, to cut granite, to cut basalt, mm -hmm. 
they have a technology that's able to levitate and stomp. Okay. So they're able to build with blocks of basalt or granite that are weighing 20 tons, okay. uh, 50 tons, even 80 or 100 tons. Okay. Uh, building giant blocks. And then, as you see, particularly in South America, in Peru, Bolivia, those perfectly cut walls in Cusco, uh -huh. at Sacsayhuaman, at Ollante Tambo, even Machu Picchu. Okay. And in fact, as Machu Picchu has a, a sister city in northern Cambodia, uh -huh. which is Priya Vihar. And it has the three windows, okay, yeah, just yeah. like Machu Picchu, okay? Yeah. When you go to Machu Picchu, that's one of the, and it's megalithic and wonderfully made of granite. And it's it's one of the most famous sites at Machu Picchu, the, the wall of three windows. All right. When you go to Priya Vihar, the camp city in northern Cambodia, Priya you have the same thing, the, the wall of three windows. It's just like Machu Picchu. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the the camp now are they're in South America. Okay, they're in Peru, they're in Bolivia, and they're in Colombia. Colombia and Ecuador too. Okay. Yeah, this whole area. What do you have like a specific site that really right. looks like a good well, site? Right. Well, I would say uh, well, Machu Picchu is in there, and again, the Keystone Cuts are there. Okay. Which are in the camp cities of Busan and Borbudur and, and, and Hampi, and all these other places, South India and, and throughout Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Now you have them also at Tiwanaku in Bolivia, and you've got them in Cusco, I know you're on Tijambo, Machu Picchu is one of them too. So you have this, and these are all, all mining areas. They're looking for metals, okay. they're gold particularly, and they're finding it. This is the, the Andes are groups. Great place to find gold. Okay. There was much gold taken at Tijuanaco and, uh, and and other sites in, in Peru or Bolivia, the Andes. Then there is this very unusual site in Colombia, which is called San Agustin. San Agustin. Yeah. And it is very high in the mountains of uh, Colombia. Okay. Very much in the western part of Colombia, near to the Pacific coast and near to Ecuador, the border of Ecuador. San Augustine, even today, is a remote town, a small little town, high in the mountains. You're, you're, you're going way up into the, the, the mountains to almost on top of a very lush, green, but rugged plateau. And streams are coming out. And the roads are very new today. They've only been around for maybe 20, 30 years, and even they've only paved them. In the last maybe uh, you know ten or fifteen years even. Okay. And Colombia has had a decades of war that is largely finished now, fortunately. And so now tourists can get to this site, okay. San Agustin. San Agustin. Yeah. And what they started finding there, uh, really about 1912, some German archaeologists came and they started seeing these megalithic statues and things. And then in the 20s and 30s. Uh, they began digging up these mounds and they started finding all of these huge granite statues. Okay. And those statues are of uh, their of Hindu deities. Okay. There's a Garuda statue there. You have as you uh, uh, yeah, we were there together. Yeah. And you pointed out to me how there was so much uh, Hindu iconography here, even statues of Shiva, you have the uh, Garuda, the, Garuda, the, Naga. the Nagas, the, the, the doorkeepers on either side, yeah, even the Shiva Lingam. Shiva Lingam, right. And I mean, you showed me some things, of course, that I would never have known that, that there are Lingams that have faces of Shiva on them, and you and I saw that there at San Agustin. I did not know that there were that Shiva was being depicted with the fangs. Yeah, yeah. In that's, South India, that's typical iconography. Okay. In, uh, in temples like Kailas and other temples, these are very ancient Shiva temple in Tamil Nadu. Yeah, all Shiva statues are portrayed with fangs. Yes. And that's what you see so much of at San Agustin. So many other people. And the guardians too often yes. have the fangs as yes. well. Yes. And then there, there'll be the two guardians and they're holding a club. Yeah. 
And you will see that too at Kandisuka, the ancient Hindu temple 